If you've been doing video production for any amount of time, you've probably been familiar with After Effects and a lot of people are uncomfortable with going anywhere else. I think that's ridiculous because I'm an avid DaVinci Resolve user and I think that people ought to learn Fusion. So what I'm gonna show you today is how to make this. If you're using Resolve for your editing just because it's free, but you're also like staying in Adobe After Effects just because that's what you know how to use and you make all your graphics there, you don't need to be doing that. You can do all of this in Fusion and not even have to leave DaVinci Resolve. And it's, it's super simple, please just listen. And you're probably wondering, well, with nodes and stuff, it, it's easy, just follow along, okay? I have a brand new DaVinci Resolve project open, called it Motion Graphics Basics. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna come over here to our effects panel, drag a Fusion composition in. You should at least know this much. I'm going to make it like maybe eight seconds long, right? There, exactly eight seconds long. So the very first thing that you need to do, okay? Just click it, go into Fusion. This is probably how you see your Fusion. It's really simple, follow along. Down here at the bottom is where your node tree is built. Think of nodes as just like layers in After Effects, okay? So if you're, if you're familiar with After Effects, this is really simple to come by. Uh, however, nodes work more in a first then sort of feature, sort of function. Uh, if you've ever done like the mathematics machines, input output machines uh, in school, this is really similar to that, where it's just like, if you have this, you make it do that, well then this is your end result. It's a lot of if then. So that's down here. And if that sounds complicated, I promise it's not, just stick with me, I'm gonna get you through this. Uh, up here to the right, this is your program viewer. And up here to the left is your secondary viewer if you so wish to use it. I oftentimes don't, but I'll show you how it works. Now, the very first thing that you need to do, and I mean the very first thing that you need to do, when starting with a blank composition, at least, uh, this is how I do it. I always like to start with a transparent background. So to do that, you're usually going to take the background node. So here you have your, your toolbar full of your tools and your most commonly used nodes. Uh, I have some custom ones on here and I don't want to confuse you guys. I'm just going to start from the very basics. I'm going to go to my default toolbar. This is exactly how yours should look right here. See all these things here, right? You want to start with a transparent background. Uh, so I'm going to take my background node right here, drag it into my node workspace and just connect it to media out. Okay, that's it. And now by default, your background is black. So to take it from black to transparent, I'm going to come up to my inspector. Now for you Adobe people, uh, inspector is kind of like effect controls. It's the window where you have like all your parameters and things that you can change for the different layer or in this case node that you have selected. So I'm gonna go to my inspector, come to my background and take alpha, bring it all the way down because I want that transparent. Now, because I wanna work in just a single program viewer, you can see my mouse right here. I'm going to come up to this button right here and press that and you'll see that my program viewer expands to the full screen. So to zoom in and out of your viewer like this, this is really simple. All you wanna do is press control on your keyboard and then scroll on your mouse wheel. That's it. And if you zoom out here, you can see the parameters. So we're working on a 4K timeline. You see 48, or sorry, 3840 by 2160 up here. For the sake of the tutorial, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower this to a 1080p timeline. So to do that, you wanna come over to your media pool, okay? Right click on your timeline, the timeline that was automatically created when we dragged the fusion composition into the timeline. Timelines, timeline settings, right? It's gonna pop up with these settings. I'm gonna uncheck use project settings because by default, I like to use 4K, but just for the tutorial, I'm going to do 1080p. Timeline resolution, come here to 1920 by 1080. Confirm that in the output tab, it looks exactly the same because the output tab is using the timeline settings for output scaling. We're good to go. You can press OK and bam. You see these numbers up here, change to 1920 by 1080. This will be a lot easier for our computer to cache, for everything to load. Uh, so if you're not working with a super like beefy, really expensive computer, this will work just fine for you. So you have your blank canvas, okay? Let's say we want to add like a bar that pops up and it has the word subscribe come out of it right so to do that we need to create that shape so to make a shape we're going to use yet another background node follow along here when you have your nodes laid out on your tree uh, you have to attach them to this line you see this line right here you connect your background node to media out and we already kind of went over what a background node is uh, but media out just if you if you haven't picked up on it that is kind of like the output of that math machine that I was talking about earlier everything that connects to media out is the final product of what you've been working on because we only have one node connected to a media out out, and that node is a transparent background. We just see transparency and hence the checkerboard pattern. So if we want to add something else in between that's going to pop up on screen, we need to merge it. We need to merge it over what we already have going. 
and thus you're gonna use a merge node. So check this out. In your default toolbar, you'll see this node right here, right? So if you take this merge, drag it down into your flow line. We're let's call this the flow line for now on because it's a flow of your nodes and the flow of your visuals. Drag this down into your flow line and on this node, you're going to notice several different inputs, okay? You have your yellow input here, you have your green input here, and you have your blue input here. Now, what took me forever to learn and what hindered me from using Fusion was learning what these inputs are and how they work. So let's go over that to start. The yellow input is your background input. So that's everything behind what you're trying to work with. Now, in this case, you might start to get familiar with the terminology that I'm using just because behind would imply layers. And in this case, it kind of works like layers because the things that are furthest over to the left on your flow line are going to be furthest back uh, in terms of the arrangement of the elements on your screen. Yellow is your background input. And in this case, I want to connect this to my background input and connect this merge output right here. That's what this little square is. Take this output and connect that into the background input of my media app. We have a, a complete line again. There's no break. You notice if the break is right here, it's because there's nothing connected to media out. Media out doesn't know what to show you because there's nothing connected. Take your flow line, connect it back into media out and you're back in business. You'll notice this foreground input right here. You can even hover your mouse over it and you'll notice it says merge one foreground. That's because it's the merge one node and it's the foreground input. So if I take this background node right here, which by default is black, take the output and connect it into my foreground. Boom. You see it turns black. Okay. But black's not the color we want. So we're going to go back to our effect controls or as it's called in DaVinci Resolve, the inspector and change the color. I'm just going to go for white right here. So I'm going to take my red, drag it all the way up, green all the way up, blue all the way up and boom, I got white. Now the next question is how do we make the shape that we want to pop up? Well, in this case, I kind of have in mind uh, like a pill sort of shape, like a rounded rectangle. Okay. We're going to make a mask. we basically have a solid right now, right? It, in after effects terms, uh, we have a solid. So we want to make uh, a rectangle out of that solid. All of these things right here, all of these effects, these nodes are, these are mask nodes. Okay. So you have your rectangle, you have your ellipse or circle, uh, you have your polygon. That's for, if you want to like hand draw your specific shape and you have your Bezier. Bezier is pretty awesome. Be spline as it's called here. Spline is cool because it lets you draw your shape, but it makes a perfectly smooth uh, connection between your points. And then you have multi-poly. Multi-poly, that's another thing for another video. It's really useful. It's extremely useful for staying clean and organized in your node tree, but that's for a different video. In this case, we just want to do the rectangle. Okay, so I'm going to take this square, drag it above here. Now, I don't recall if we went over the blue input already, but blue is uh, your mask input. This is how you make shapes out of things. So think of mask as your way of saying, I want to apply whatever effect or whatever control I'm adding, but I only wanted to apply within this specific space. And in this case, this specific space is the rectangle. So I'm going to take the output of my rectangle here, drag it into the blue mask input of my background and boom, now we have a shape with this shape selected. Okay. This specific node, it has to be this node right here for you to have the controls of that node. We want to change the parameters of the mask of the rectangle mask. So you can either work in your viewer here. You can grab the corner, you can grab the side, you can grab the top, or you can come in your inspector and change your, your center, your, your width, your height. In this case, I'm going to set it because I want this to be low like that. And like I said, I wanted it to be rounded. So I'm going to take the corner radius right here and drag this all the way up. And you see, now I get this pretty cool shape. And that's how you make the shape. It's pretty simple. It's going to serve as the baseline for what we got going on. So you'll see that everything we have here exists on the merge node in our flow line, right? So we have a transparent background. We have merge connecting our background with a shape cut out of it and then that connects straight to media out so let's say we want to make this shape appear out of thin air right like let's say we want to have it pop in as if it were popping out from an invisible shape uh, there is a way to do that and i will show you what we're going to take another square mask drag it beneath here now merge is interesting because merge serves a lot of different purposes merge is kind of like the master control. It's kind of like if you do any audio processing, it's kind of like plus one or your master controls. So if I apply this output into my mask input of the merge, you'll watch here. If I move my mask, it changes what I can see. So I can only see what's connected to the merge within that space that I designated with the mask down here, right? It goes back to what I said earlier, a mask designates what you want to see, but only in this specific space. So because this specific space is defined as this rectangle of which my shape is perfectly inside of, uh, wherever I move my shape, you'll be able to see the mask that we have going on so far. So I'm going to recenter this. You can always reset a parameter in your uh, inspector by double clicking on the label right here. So like I want to change 
this and make it go back to the center, I'm gonna double click on the word center right here and boom, you see it goes right back. Now, just for the sake of being able to fit my entire shape, I'm going to open the radius of the shape a little bit more and boom, you see it fits right in. Now, let's talk about movement, okay? There is a node in Fusion called the Transform node. Uh, transform serves a very specific purpose. Transform lets you move things around, it lets you rotate them, it lets you flip them horizontally or vertically. Uh, it lets you change the anchor point, as it's called in Adobe, or in this case, the pivot point. Uh, transform's pretty cool. So we wanna move this shape, right? So I'm gonna take my transform node. See this node right here? This is called transform. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drag it, and I'm gonna put it in between my background node and my merge node, okay? See, now it's connected. Watch what happens. See, I have my little controls pop up right here in the center. I can take this control and move it back, and you see, as my shape that I'm moving, meets the boundary of the mask that I set earlier, uh, it starts to move out of bounds. So this is how we're gonna make it pop on screen from out of nowhere. Think of mats. Think of a track, what's it called track mats? Or mat controls or mat shapes in, a, in After Effects. This is your way of doing that, except it's set up just this simply. So I'm gonna take my shape, move it all the way back here. Now let's keyframe it. We want it to move from here to here. Very simple. With your shape out of the way here, uh, I'm gonna direct your attention to this timeline beneath your viewer, okay? You see this? Two, four, six, eight, ten. You can click and drag in your timeline, and you'll see your playhead start to move from left to right as your clip progresses. Now, in my case, I have 191 frames in this specific clip. That's how long my clip lasts. Uh, so I'm gonna push it all the way back to the beginning, and I'm gonna come up to my inspector. Make sure you have your transform node selected. Uh, this is how we're gonna change the shape. Uh, and you'll notice, since we took those arrows and moved our shape over to the left off screen here, you'll see that this value has changed. You can also click and drag in this value. You see this, see how the shape is moving? You can you can change where it goes by clicking and dragging on the number values in Inspector. That's I, I use that more often than not. It allows really precise control. I mean, you can see here how many integers it goes out to. So very precise control. I prefer that. And that's just one thing that I prefer in Resolve over Adobe was that the, is that the movement just feels very fluid and very precise. Anyways, we're gonna keyframe this. We're gonna animate it. So you'll notice here the keyframe design carries over from Adobe, uh, this keyframe here. So I'm gonna click to add a keyframe and then I'm going to to take my playhead and I want it to move over the course of say 10 frames. Okay, so I'm gonna take my playhead down here in my timeline and move my playhead to the 10th frame. You can confirm you're on the 10th frame by just visually confirming with the playhead or looking at this number down here in the bottom right. This is 10, that's how you know you're on 10 frames. I'm going to move it over to where I want it to be. So I'm gonna click and drag in my inspector right here and you'll notice my shape moving. Okay, super simple. And now because I know perfect center is 0.5 and I wanted to get it just exact, I'm just gonna double click in here, type 0.5, click off, and it's right in the center. So what happens now is if you take your playhead and move it all the way back, you'll notice, boom, you have an animated shape. Pretty simple. One thing that I wanna show you, like a little, little trick that I always use, is if you go into the settings and transform here and turn on motion blur, it gives it a nice smooth effect as it's moving. Now, because you've turned on motion blur, you can see it's a little blurry out here, but because I know I'm on my first keyframe and that first keyframe specifies where the shape is gonna be at the very beginning, I can just move the shape back and now you can't see it. Another thing to notice, this is just a little learning point, is if you come down here to the timeline, you'll notice that the keyframes are visible on the timeline right here, right? And it's worth noting that the only keyframes visible on the timeline apply to the specific node or nodes that you have selected at any given time. Because in my node tree down here, the only nodes that I have selected are the transform node, which also happens to be the only node with any sort of keyframes. These are the keyframes that I have visible on my timeline. And you can see here at the zero point and here at the 10 point. Okay, now you might be saying, this looks a little off. Like it just looks like, too abrupt when it stops, it starts too abruptly, it stops too abruptly. How do we make this easy? How do we make it start slow, pick up, and then end slow? Glad you asked. In Adobe, in uh, After Effects, this is called the speed graph or the speed editor. In uh, DaVinci Resolve, or Fusion at least, this is called the spline editor. Same thing, just different names. And, and that carries over a lot between uh, Adobe systems and DaVinci Resolve. There are a lot of the same controls, just under different names. With my transform node selected, I'm gonna open up the spline editor. And if you want to move your node tree over, like my spline editor popped up on top of my node tree, you can just click an empty space here with your middle mouse button, click and drag, and that moves it over just like that. Pretty easy. The spline editor is open. You'll see we have a graph of sorts popped up here, but we don't have anything selected. That's because uh, it gives us the option to choose what specific parameters we want to adjust. So the only parameters I have here that I can adjust are the displacement within the center parameter of the transform node. Pretty simple. 
you can click that and boom, you have a line. This line shows a very linear movement from point A to point B, but we wanna make it smooth. So I'm gonna zoom in on this a little bit, or another thing that you can do, and I, I usually use this, is if you notice my mouse here is over this fit to screen sort of icon, you click that. What that'll do is that will change the specific spline pattern that you're working with to fill up the entirety of the graph in the spline editor. And from here, you can adjust the height of it and then zoom out so that you have a little more precise control. That's my preference. You can, you can work with it however you want. But what's really cool when it comes to easing is if you click and drag to select both points right here, these are both keyframes and then you press either the letter S for smooth or the letter F for flatten on your keyboard boom you get the smooth easing now check this out looks a little better Okay, it's not it's not like perfect, uh, but one of the spline curves that I really like to use is if you take this top piece right here, you'll notice if you drag to select it, you'll get the little control handles. Drag this out here all the way so that the line is perfectly straight or as straight as you can get it. Now watch this. It just looks a little more pleasing, right? Now you can mess with this spline line however you like. You can make it go like, you can make it come down like that. I don't know, I kind of like this look right here. This is where you get to be creative with your, with your graphics and how you like to do things. I just really like that, so I'm gonna leave that there. Okay, so next we want the word subscribe to pop up. So this is something that you might use in your YouTube videos. To make the subscribe pop up, we need to put it within that shape. But to do that, we want the word to also move with the bar, if that makes sense, so that the background, the white bar, the white shape doesn't move and leave the text behind it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and analyze our, our node tree. Here in this pile of nodes, uh, there's a specific order that's being followed, right? You have the specific shape that designates uh, what your shape is gonna look like. In this case, it's a rounded rectangle. It's made out of a white background and it moves from left to right. We also want the words to move from left to right. So what that means is that those words have to be connected to the transform node that we've already made because we can make the them both move at the same time. Here's how we're gonna do that. I'm gonna zoom out of here a little bit. You can zoom in and out of your, your note tree by pressing plus and minus on your keyboard. I'm gonna zoom out just to this point right here. And I wanna make a little bit more space because we're gonna move some things around. So with my transform node down here, I'm gonna select these two, push them up, and I'm going to make uh, what's called a multi-merge node. Multi-merge is really cool just because if you've noticed down here, we have our regular merge node. That allows you to add one thing to it. You can, you can merge one thing on top of your flow line. Multi-merge allows you to add two things onto your flow line. So I'm gonna take my multi-merge node right here. It looks, it's right next to the merge node. It looks just like it, except it has two inputs. Take this, drag it, and put it right beneath your background node. Okay, so you'll notice automatically uh, the flow line from background went automatically into the background node of multi-merge. This is important to note about merge and multi-merge nodes is that you're not gonna see whatever you have connected to them unless there is a background attached. So it can be whatever you want. It's just there has to be a background uh, in there somewhere. So because we have our background node attached right here, we can see our shape and we can see it just fine. You'll notice that if we put our playhead at the timeline back to the beginning, it moves exactly the way we want it to. Uh, because we have our transform node down at the bottom, anything that we attach to this multi-merge node now will also move with the shape. I'm going to take my text node right here, see this, drag this down, put this onto the graph, and drag my output line, my flow line, into the white input of multi-merge. This is important to note about multi-merge, is with multi-merge, the inputs are designated as white. So anything you wanna add into multi-merge is white. Now you can't see anything here because I haven't typed anything, but if I type subscribe, you still can't see anything because we have white letters over a white shape. So I'm gonna change my color here in my inspector to say red right here, right? Boom, you got red letters. I like to use the Monsterot font. So so I'm gonna choose that. Uh, maybe we'll do all caps. There we go. I like that. You can make it whatever you want to be. This is just what I what I like. Okay. Since you have this added, check this out. Bring your playhead and your timeline all the way back to the beginning, and you'll see it moves with. Uh, let's go over that one more time. You have your shape. You have the solid that your shape is made out of. With this case, it's just a mask going into a multi merge, which goes down to the transform, so it tells it where to move the shape. But into this multi merge is also text. So the text moves with the shape because it goes here. It's connected 
connected to here and it's connected to here. Everything connected to the transform node moves based on where the transform node tells it to do. Really easy way of making sure that you can move anything you want with just one control without having to go back through pages and pages of pre-comps or different compositions that you have uh, layered out in After Effects. And again, there's nothing wrong with using After Effects. This is just what I prefer just because I find this simpler. Uh, eventually, you'll probably make some really complicated node graphs, but this is just what I like and I find it more efficient. So once you learn it, it's kind of hard to go back, at least for me. Uh, so I'd really recommend giving this a shot if you're following along still. So you'll notice we have everything added here. Now, because this is a multi-merge node, it implies that we can add more than one thing. So if, for example, I wanted to add like a, like a red outline around my subscribe here, I can do that. So I need to make another shape and shape means background node because we want to cut that shape out with a mask. In order to do that though, you have to have the background node even connected to multi-merge in the first place. So you take your output and connect it to the white input of the multi-merge. You have blackness again and the black takes the shape of the mask that we already assigned to the original merge node down at the bottom. I know this is confusing, just try this a couple times, do it a few times practice and I promise you'll get it. Because background by default comes uh, as solid black, what I want to do is I want to change this to solid red and now I want to make that rounded rectangle shape again so I'm going to take my rectangle mask okay, and connect it to the mask input which is blue on the background node that I have right here and boom you have this. I'm going to take this, drag it down bring it about right here and then change the corner radius and I bumped it all the way up last time and now you're like well duh but you can't see your text anymore yes you can't that's because you have solid selected here if you want this to be not solid just uncheck solid and now you shan't be able to see anything because your border width is set to zero so when you have it set to solid it's gonna fill whatever shape that is if you uncheck it uh, you have the option to make the border width of your shape fill the color that you designated so watch and if this doesn't make sense just watch right here. I'm in my inspector. I have my border width. I'm going to drag this up and you can see the, the width of the border of the shape starts to fill up and you can set that to whatever you want it to be. I like it about right here. I'm going to zoom in and that's again with control and scroll wheel. So like this, move it up a little bit, maybe pull this out. That looks pretty cool. You'll notice again that everything leads down to the transform node, which means that this will all move when I tell it to. Cool. Next thing you might be looking at is this shape right here where it cuts off because of our mask. It, it looks just wrong. It looks like it shouldn't be so hard. So if you're in your mask node and you go to rectangle, in this case, the rectangle is the mask. You come up to your inspector, your tools and go to soft edge. Watch what happens when you drag this up it softens the edge, right? It doesn't look so abrupt. Now watch what happens when, when you play, boom. Just like that. I think this is pretty simple. Uh, you can add whatever you want over here as well. So say for example, you want this over like a green background. You can take another merge node, take your background that you want to add, take your background, connect it to your input of the merge node and make it whatever color you want. Let's go over some fundamentals here. I had mentioned earlier, I'm just gonna clean this up by dragging this all together and condensing it. I'd mentioned earlier how nodes kind of have some layer functionality to them and that still is true here. Whatever is furthest over to the left or closest to the beginning of your flow line uh, is furthest back. And in this case, our green background is closest to the beginning of our four line and therefore it is furthest back behind our subscribe shape right here, right? And our subscribe shape is furthest away from the beginning of the flow line and therefore it's on top right here. Pretty simple stuff. It works kind of like layers in that sense. Yeah, I don't want this here. Uh, what's cool about this though, is since you have your checkered animation in the background, that means that this is transparent, okay? So now you have this here and you can add footage behind it or whatever you wanna add behind it, right? So let's say you have your, your footage right here. Pretend this is your footage. You can drag this on top and watch what happens when you play. Boom, just like that. And I didn't even have to go to After Effects for that. I just went over to the other page. I promise you, Fusion is not as hard as you probably think it is. It just takes some time to get in, learn it, figure out what the colors mean, figure out what the nodes and different effects are. And I promise you, once it starts to work, it's really fun. One more thing I wanna show you before we uh, call this one. If you look with your node graph, we've already kind of discussed how the order of the nodes that you place matters because everything that comes before a certain thing applies to that effect. In this case, 
the example being that everything that comes before the transform node has the transform node properties, in this case, the movement, applied to it. And same goes otherwise. So let's say we wanna make our subscribe animation glow. We wanna have it glow like it's lit up from a light, right? There's a couple different things I could do. Here's the first thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna come up to my effects panel right here, click, and you'll notice our effects pop up. In your little magnifying glass, search G-L-O-W. You'll see a couple different glow options pop up. I'm just gonna use this first one. Because I want this glow to affect everything on our node graph, everything that we've put together so far, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna drag it and I'm gonna put it right before media out. That means it affects everything. This is way too much of a glow. So I'm gonna come up to my inspector, my effect controls, and turn down the glow. I like it about right there, right about 4 a. Let's see what 0.5 looks like. 0.5 looks good. Okay, now, because there's nothing else in our node tree, I could also move this glow node and have it affect everything else the same. So if you wanna take a node out of the flow line, and I'm, I'm gonna do that right now, it's because I wanna show you what it looks like when I move it. You could press shift, click, and drag up. Okay, see that? You wanna put it back, press shift, click and drag down and you'll see this little thing pop up and it's re-added. You know, you'll see the, the effect turn on and off, okay? Watch what happens when I put my glow node right here in between multi-merge and transform. The effect turns on again. You can see there is a glow here. That's just because that everything that is behind the glow is everything so far. It's our shape, it's, it's, it's our white background shape, it's our red outline shape, and it's our text. So everything kind of just goes together like that. All of those things feed into the glow node, therefore they glow, and the glow node feeds into the transform form node, therefore they move. Now I could put it back here, and because our subscribe animation is the only thing on this composition, it's all gonna glow anyways. So in this instance, it doesn't matter, but it is still an important lesson in how node placement and node order really does matter when you're working with big, complicated things. So that's about it for uh, what I got going on right here. I really hope you learned something from this, and if you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. I do gotta say, if you watch this far, you really take Fusion seriously. I just wanna teach people how to use this stuff because I find it very powerful and even on my drive home from work, my drive to work, like I'm thinking about the things that I can make because it's it's creativity in motion, you know, and like you can see everything that you have going on all at once without having to scroll up and down through a bunch of layers and this is just my preference again uh, i just happen to find it really really useful so uh really hope you learned something today and might be able to take something out of this video uh, maybe it'll let you make better videos so yeah like i said if you learned something leave a like subscribe to the channel and uh see you in the next one